In 1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for the Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on tactics. In light of what we were just talking about, I do think that it's important to sort of on a broader note, talk about false teachers in general, because it's important for us as Christians to remember, and it's important for those of you who may not be Christians or maybe aren't real strong in your faith to remember that the way to tell a Christian from a non-Christian is not whether or not they say they're a Christian, but whether or not they actually do the will of God, which we just saw in the verse that we looked at. And this verse comes from a different place. It comes from the Apostle Paul in his letter to the Philippians in chapter 3, verses 17 through 19. Brethren, join in following my example and observe those who walk according to the pattern you have in us. For many walk, of whom I've often told you, and now tell you even weeping, that they are enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their appetite and whose glory is their shame, who set their mind on earthly things. So when asking this question of who is really of God and who is not, just like we saw in the Sermon on the Mount, the standard that Jesus Christ gives is obedience. That's how you're supposed to tell who is a part of the fold of God, who is a follower of Christ, and who isn't. And really what Paul is saying here is just affirming that same thing, and he gives some traits of who really is part of God. So if you're looking at the first part of that verse in, in verse 19, uh, 17, who is really of God? It's those who walk by the pattern that the apostles set forth for the world. So Jesus is the original example we are to live according to the example that he left for us. And part of the way that we know that example, unless we were one of the ones that were actually with Christ at the time, is the writings of the apostles and the example that they set forth for us. And so that's the important thing to note here, that if we want to be able to distinguish Christians from non-Christians, what's the standard that Paul gives? Those who walk according to that pattern. Well, we don't know Paul, and we don't personally know Peter and Andrew and James and John and all the other apostles, so how are we supposed to know? It's very simple. They left it to us in the New Testament. They left their writings, they left their commentaries. We know what they thought, and we know the pattern that they lived their life by, and the philosophy that they taught to others, because we have it enshrined in the New Testament. And somebody that just brushes that away or thinks of it as insignificant or thinks that you can pick or choose whatever message you want out of it and just kind of craft it to your own personal preferences, that's not somebody that's walking according to the pattern. So if you dig a little bit deeper into this, I think the second question is, okay, then who isn't following that pattern? Who isn't walking according to to what Paul is saying here, who isn't really part of Christ? It's simple. It's those who ignore that pattern. It's a simple question. It's an obvious question, but it's one that people often forget. That somebody that's not really following that pattern, somebody that's not striving every single day, doesn't mean they follow it perfectly, but the people that are trying to, the people that are trying to eradicate sin from their life and live a life according to the Scripture, that's somebody that is actually a follower of Christ, somebody that is disciplined, which is where the word disciple comes from, somebody that disciplines themselves every single day to try to eradicate sin from their lives and do good. It's not an either-or thing. You have to walk according to the pattern. It's not enough to just not sin. You have to also walk in the example of Christ and the example that the apostles left for us in the gospel accounts and in their personal writings and in the epistles. So what traits does Paul say are going to give those false teachers away? Well, 
He says their God is their appetite, glory is their shame, and their mind is on earthly things. This is the reason that homosexuality is a pretty clear indicator if somebody is openly and unashamedly living in that lifestyle, you can already tell that they're not a real follower of Christ. First of all, their God is their appetite. Now, the Greek word that's used here actually means belly. So it's safe to assume that what Paul is talking about is somebody who is gluttonous and, and what they're doing is they're primarily concerned with their meals. But what that's really saying is it's somebody that is concerned with fulfilling their own needs. There's a reason that we refer to it as a sexual appetite. Even if you're a straight person, and even if you're married, if that's your chief concern in life, you have some serious spiritual problems. And so especially if you're living outside of those confines and you're saying, okay, well, the kind of sexuality that I practice doesn't matter that it's not lining up with the scripture, I can do it because it makes me feel good. Well, then you're certainly outside. You're certainly having your mind focused on earthly things, which is another indication that Paul gives. And another one that's very telling here, too, is that their glory is their shame. Somebody that revels and actually uses the worst parts of themselves and tries to make it into something that they feel they ought to be proud of that's pretty clearly somebody that's not living according to the pattern as well. And so somebody that flaunts like, and struts around as though their homosexuality is something to be proud of, well, that would certainly be somebody that their glory is their shame and somebody that you can readily identify as someone that's a false teacher. And so somebody that's mind is constantly on earthly things I mean, I think that that's pretty clear that this is something that we're dealing with here. And so I'm not saying this specifically with Pete Buttigieg. I'm saying that he does line up with all of those qualifications. And the reason that I bring that up as an example is hopefully that in your personal life, when it's not quite this obvious, that you'll look back at this scripture and remember, you know, this person claims that they're a Christian and they claim to care about Christ and living the way that he wants us to live. But this scripture acts as a warning and says, hmm, if they're fitting into all of these things, this is not somebody I really need to be following. It's not somebody who, whose advice I need to heed when it comes to correct interpretation of the scripture. And that's how you know. See, that's the great thing about the scripture is that it not only gives us the commands and how we're supposed to instruct and inform our own decisions that we make in our own life, it also gives, it as, it also gives us advice to correct others and to recognize when others are trying to lead us off the path and away from the pattern that God laid out for us. Stay the course, friends. <laughs>